Good evening, it is Matilda Cooks, and I am actually making something I've never made before tonight, and that is dirty rice. And so I'm just gonna go ahead, and I am just gonna get to chopping here. I'm gonna try and do this in a semi-real time, just so y'all can see, and I'm gonna hope that the camera angle I got is gonna work. So we're just gonna start with a, usually a Cajun Mirepoix always starts with onions, celery, and green peppers. But I don't have green peppers, so according to my always rule, which is waste not, want not, we are just gonna be doing what I have, which is onions, celery, and orange peppers. So we'll just have to trust that it's gonna turn out okay. I, I was watching Dirty Rice videos actually all day, trying to get an idea for what I wanted to do, which I always adapt and simplify and make my own. And so this is just the way that I'm doing it. So I'm just gonna call it faux Dirty Rice because I know that I'm not making it traditionally, but I am going to try here. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is just go ahead and get these onions going because I've already got my oil heating. There's my celery. And I even saved the tops of these peppers because I am like super just, why throw it away when you can use it? If it is a good part of the vegetable to eat, eat it. Let's go ahead and get in the rest of our mirepoix, Cajun mirepoix, except for minus the green peppers, the holy trinity they call it. And the first thing I am going to do is just get a little bit of salt. My rustic rub does have salt in it, but not like a big amount and I really want to get these vegetables sweating. And when I was watching other people make this, some started with the hamburger first, some start with the vegetables first. I'm starting with the vegetables first and I actually saw a lot of people adding seasonings afterward and I'm going to add seasoning as I go because I always like it to cook in with what I'm cooking. Okay, so we're just going to sweat these guys down until they're just getting nice and caramelized and when they get about halfway there is when I'm going to throw the hamburger in because I really like the hamburger to get all this flavor that these mirepoix is going to give it in its cooking process and also add my rustic rub to my beef on the way as well. So let's get a little rustic rub on here. I am sure that I have this recipe like actually uh, printed off from back before everything was online and I will actually put this in the description because I am telling you what from gumbo to this dirty rice to anything that you're going to make. Emeril Lagasse's rustic rub is the bomb. It is so good and it's so versatile and it has such great flavor. That is exactly why I make it myself and I keep it in a little jar so that I can pull it out and use it whenever I'm doing something that has a Cajun flair to it. Etouffee, the gumbo that we make. My son is amazing at making etouffee. He always uses the rustic rub. It is just a delicious way to go. My goodness, y'all, it's already smelling like fantastic. That rustic rub, those onions, that celery, love it, yum. I'm gonna let just, this go just like a hair further and then we're gonna get that hamburger in. All right, these are getting nice and glossy. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start putting in my hamburger. And I know that you can use sausage with this, but I did see lots of people making it with hamburger online too. And we just happen to have a lot of hamburgers, so there are gonna be a lot of hamburger recipes on this channel. 
because we order beef and we get it in mass quantities just because it's so versatile and there's so many things you can do with it. All right, again, I am just going to salt this just a skosh. Not crazy copious amounts of salt, but just a little something. One thing about grass-fed beef is that you absolutely do need to season it. It is not as uh, deliciously flavored as grain-fed, but it is much healthier. So a little salt and pepper, and then again, I'm going to go ahead and hit it with my rustic rub. I don't know why, but I always feel like it imparts more flavor when I put it in from raw rather than doing it when it's already cooked. And that might just be me. It is not a proven fact. So I'm starting this off in my nonstick pan just because I prefer using my nonstick pan, but I'm going to end up putting everything in this pan because this pan is so much bigger and it's going to be able to hold the rice as well. I'm going to do one more little sprinkling of the rustic rub. And I might go around just with a little bit of my pink Himalayan salt. And then I'm going to hold off on anything else until this cooks up and I can be able to taste it. But not only are we flavoring this beef, but we're also going to be flavoring the rice that we're putting in, in as well, which I just made in my Instant Pot my rice video that I made. So now I'm just getting this all nice and kind of minced up as far as like the hamburger goes. These vegetables are nice and soft and sauteed. They're going to be delicious. And I might even make a little bit, well, you know, actually I have some chicken stock in the refrigerator. I'll probably just use that. But I was going to say I would make even a little bit of beef stock just in case I want to just hydrate that rice and have this all come together better. But you know what? That's another thing. I'm going to use what I have already prepared and uh, just use the chicken stock if I feel like I need a little moisture. Oh, yeah. Look at how nice and juicy that is getting. Delicious. That hamburger is just about done. So I'm just about going to um, transfer it into my other pot with the rice. And then we'll see what its needs are, but we'll go ahead and give this a taste real quick for now. It's good. I am going to do one more little go of rustic rub, not because I think that the meat needs it or this mixture needs it, but just because I am flavoring that rice up, I am going to go ahead and put that in there. And so this is that uh, chicken stock that I had left over from the other night of my cooking. I'm just going to put this in a little bit just because I want to keep this real nice and juicy because I really want that liquid to impart all this flavor that I'm creating into that rice. And beef stock would work probably better, but hey, again, at least not one night, yo. The food inflation is going up scary. My goodness. That is really good. I feel like I want to put just like a little tiny bit of cayenne in there just because I love cayenne, but at the same time, I think I'm just going to skip that because it might get a little too zippy at the end and then I'd be bummed. All right, so we'll just transfer all this goodness into this pot here. There, now we can just throw all this on in.
just getting this really well incorporated. I want to make sure all those little balls of rice that don't want to break up, break up, and that that meat and all that flavor really gets in there. It is getting really delicious. That's so good. That rice is heating up. It's really getting all that flavor that you can see from that liquid from the meat and that little bit of extra stock. It's going to really pick it up well. I'm going to switch this on the other burner and then I'm going to start on my southern style cabbage. All right, now we are going to get started on my southern fried cabbage. And so I'm, of course, going to start out with some bacon. Let me get my pan on. I just cut it up into some chunks. I like it when it's, you know, got some uh, room to fry in there. And I like the pieces of it, and it's easier for me to do it at the beginning than on the end. Oh, all right. It's ready for the onion. Now, even though this is bacon and it's salty, I am still going to have to season a little bit. I am just going to put a, just a tad of salt on these onions just to get them releasing their water and starting to caramelize. All right, so this is the seasoning that I am going to be using for my cabbage, and this is a shout out to Bees Rubs. And this is batch nine, and it's fantastic. They are local right here in the state of Washington, and not even that far from where we are now. They're in Othello. And these rubs are so delicious. No preservatives in them. They're not salty at all. You know, I actually add salt when I want salt to them, like I just added that little bit of salt. And it is delicious. So good. Now this might seem crazy, but I'm adding just a tiny bit of olive oil in there. Now you have your choice right now. You can pull this bacon out and it'll be a bit more crisp on the crisp side. And that is an amazing idea and I love it. As a matter of fact, when I do my bacon and green beans and onions, I do pull the bacon out and I don't put it back in until the end. But this cabbage is gonna cook up real quick and it's, you know, it's gonna be just fine. I, I'm not gonna pull it out this time. So we'll go ahead and get our cabbage in. I'm going to hit it with one pink Himalayan salt and a bit of my bees. This cabbage is getting beautiful. It is just about where I like it. And this is a personal preference. You know, if you are a person who likes it really, really cooked and really, really just, I don't know what the word would be, like where it's just falling apart in your mouth cabbage, then you would want to continue going from here and maybe even put a little liquid in it so that it would be almost boiling, kind of braising rather than I'm just really, truly sauteing it. I haven't 
added any liquid, any glossiness that you see is just from the sweating of the vegetable and a little bit of um, baking grease and a little bit of olive oil that I put in there. And so this is where I like mine. But my family traditionally likes it um, more braised. But that's okay, because by tomorrow when we you know, heat it up for them, it'll be even more tender. All right, I've made myself a tasting bowl, and I am excited to get in here and see what we got going. Just get into this dirty rice first. Mmm. That is very, very good. You know, I'm so glad that I didn't add that extra cayenne pepper because the rustic rub has cayenne in it and it is actually exactly enough. And if you want more spice, you can always just add a little like Frank's or a little Cristal or something. All right, let's get a nice bite of this cabbage in here with this delicious bacon. Mm-hmm. That is wonderful. All right, I'm not going to eat too much here. My husband is on his way home, and I'm going to save my appetite for dinner with my perfect husband. I hope you guys try this. This cabbage is delicious. The bacon is delicious. Bee's rubs is delicious. I love it. I hope you give it a try. God bless you, and have a great day.